Thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life. So let's tune in. We're going to talk about some, uh, a spiritual principle that has allowed me and everyone that practices it to succeed. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people in this world that are success coaches and they teach people how to succeed. Amen. One of them is Anthony Robbins. And this weekend, um, Conor McGregor, for you guys that follow UFC fighting, he fought this weekend, out of, uh, he had, took off almost a year of fighting. He came back and he came back with a different attitude. So people were asking, who are you talking to? And he said, I'm talking to Anthony Robbins. And Anthony Robbins is, is right now being his life coach. Anthony Robbins is not a Christian, but he's taken a lot of Christian principles that he got from the Bible, and he's teaching people in Hollywood, teaching businesses how to succeed, and yet he's getting the information from the best-selling book in the world, the Bible. And what a shame would it be that we as Christians have all these answers, but we're just hearing and not doing so the people that are hearing and doing, whether they're Christians or not, God's word works. Now, if you apply a principle that works, it works for anyone. It's just like having a seed. You plant a seed and it, it doesn't matter. It works if you put the seed in the ground and water it. God's word works for everyone that hears it and does it. And it doesn't work for anyone that hears it and doesn't do it. It doesn't even work for those that hear it and know it and understand it and preach it if they don't do it. So we're not here to just be hearers of the word, but we're here to be doers of the word. Now today I'm going to give you a principle that has allowed me to succeed in every endeavor that I've ever attempted. And I believe that there's not anything I can't succeed at that God has called me to do. Amen. I could do anything God tells me to do and be really good at it. I could be successful. And I could not only be successful, I could teach others to succeed. Today we are here and I want to teach you how to succeed through a principle called goal setting. Someone say goal setting. Goal setting. Now goal setting, really what it is, is this. It's simple. Goal setting is a process of choosing where we want to go in life and the steps it takes to get us there. It's choosing. That means that you could choose the kind of life you want. You can choose what your future is going to look like. And then you put effort in, put effort in that will take you there. That means if you don't put the effort, it's not going to happen. So it's great to set goals, but also goal setting is part of choosing or aiming of where you want to go, where, who you want to be, and also doing this, putting the effort in that gets you there. Brian Tracy, he's a motivational speaker, he says, your ability to discipline yourself to set clear goals and then to work toward them every day will do more to guarantee your success than any single factor. Just think about that. Set clear goals and then work towards them every single day. Are you working towards a goal or are you just surviving, just living? Goal setting is biblical. Goal setting is a biblical principle. Pastor, prove it to me. Philippians 3.14. It says, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul, that wrote the majority of the New Testament, he said, I press on towards the goal. He's pressing towards a goal. What's the goal? Heaven, a relationship with Christ. So he's saying, my goal, my number one goal, is one day, every day, I'm moving towards a day I will be with Christ for eternity. And I pray that out of all the goals that you have, that this is number one on your list as well. You don't want to be a person that gains the whole world. And then at the end, you lose your soul. Because you never made it a goal to go to heaven 
and have a relationship with Christ. No one's going to get to heaven without making a choice to go to heaven. So goal setting is part of, part of goal setting is, is determining and choosing your eternal destination. It's a choice. It's choosing Christ. Every one of us can reject Christ or we could choose Christ. What Paul was saying, I, this is what he says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Quick facts about goals in the, that we could pick up out of this, just this scripture. Fact number one, no goal will be accomplished without being intentional about it. He said, I press on towards the goal. I press on towards the goal. I'm intentional. You'll never be successful in the area you're not intentionally trying to be successful in. It's a choice. It's intentional. You're not going to accidentally have a great relationship or marriage. You're not going to accidentally become skilled in your area that you should be an expert in. You're not going to accidentally become an NBA basketball player or accidentally become one of the Olympians. It's going to be a choice that you make. You're not going to accidentally be a champion. You're not going to accidentally be a minister, a volunteer, a world changer. These are choices that you make. So goals must be intentionally made. And I've learned this. If you're not intentional about your life, if you don't choose what your future is going to be like right now, the devil will get, gladly help you choose. So you choose with God or he chooses. It's important to choose what kind of life you want. The reason we're making bad choices is because we're just living life and we're reacting. We're not goal setting. It's time to be visionaries. Set some goals. This is my future is going to be like. It doesn't matter how bad it looks like right now. I know my future is bright because I can see it on paper. These are my goals. This is the vision. See, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. So what are you aiming for? What are we aiming for? Well, as a church, we know what we're aiming for. We're aiming for our downtown, downtown to be saved, lives to be transformed. This year, we're aiming to open up a foster home for aging out kids that have been rejected their whole lives. This year, we're aiming at 10,000 souls being saved. This year, we're aiming at having a crusade at the 66th Stadium, and we're aiming at that. And guess what? Because we're aiming at it, we're going to hit it. And if we don't aim at it, we miss it. We don't hit it. Fact number two, no goal will be accomplished without a press. He said, I press on toward the goal. A press means to pursue in order to catch, to run after, to seek after passionately, to stretch toward. Anything that's worthwhile in life will not come easy. A matter of fact, it will be way harder than you ever thought. And that's why I'm telling you right now, you're in a fight of faith. And when you set a goal to succeed, every single thing that's trying to stop you from succeeding will press against you. Your press needs to be stronger than the press that's coming against you. Some will say press towards the goal. I'm mentioning this because in Christianity, we've lost our press. When the enemy presses against us, we just walk back. We're letting the devil set the pace in our ring. We're moving backwards instead of pressing the action. You get offended, you start walking away. I'm done with that church. They offended me. They took my chair. We need to be like Zacchaeus. If there's no chair, I'll stand, I'll stand on a tree. But, I, but I'm pressing towards Jesus. I'm pressing towards, come on, I'm pressing towards the goal. I'm not going to be discouraged out of this fight. Someone say press. You have to press to accomplish goals. If you feel oppressed, you're probably doing something worthwhile. 
like, I want to exercise, but I don't like the press that comes against me. Yesterday I got on a treadmill. It's never convenient for me. So you know what I do? I try to talk myself into doing a, a, just, just a little bit less. Just get on the treadmill. So I have to talk myself into getting on the treadmill. And then this is what you're, you're only going to do for 10 minutes. I really want to do for 20. I'm just tricking myself. And then when I get to 10 minutes and then I tell myself, 10 more minutes. Because I want to be on there 20 minutes. You know what I'm pressing against? That thought that's trying to keep me from getting in shape, from being healthy. And I've learned this. If I don't press, whatever's pressing against me takes over. Life is a press, isn't it? Let's keep looking at this. Fact number three, nothing great will ever be accomplished without a goal. I press on towards the goal. Goal setting is the key to accomplish everything you always wanted to accomplish in life. Every area that you set goals in, you will succeed in. Every area you don't set goals in, you will not succeed in. Life is intentional. Well, I'm not succeeding in this area. Well, how much, I mean, have you thought, have you had any thoughts about that area? Like thinking about it? About, I want to succeed in this area. Do you even know the areas you're even trying to succeed in? If you've not made that decision, understand you've not even set goals. And if you've not set goals, we, any area we've not set goals in, we will not succeed in. We should have spiritual goals for our personal development. We should have financial goals. We should have relationship goals. We should have attitude goals. Any area that you set goals in, you will grow in, you will succeed in, you will advance in. God is just saying, is there anybody that's even thinking about a better life? And fact number four, real quick, after a goal is accomplished, there is always a prize. I press on towards the goal for the prize, the award to the victorious. That's what prize means. Anything worth striving for, value to win. What's the prize? Satisfaction, prosperity, promotions, life, lives impacted, next level joy, financial increase, maturity. Why am I talking about a prize? Why is Paul talking about a prize? He's talking about a prize because we're living in a world that wants the prize without the process. He goes, I press towards the goal of the upward call. Upward means you got to climb. Not downward call. Downward, you don't even need an engine for a car to drive downward. But, but if we want to go upward, you need some horsepower. You got to start pressing. And then after you've accomplished the goal, finish the process, then there's a prize. Then there's a victory. Then there's a celebration. Then we go to the next level of responsibility. After we're faithful with the process. I want a prize, but I don't want the process. Well, you're not going to get a prize. You, this is what's going to happen. You will stay in the process for the rest of your life until you get through a process to get to the prize. You'll stay in want. And God is saying, I want my church not to be in want, but I want them to understand there is a process. Let's keep going. What is a goal? Goal is a desired result, aim, a target, even prayer, purpose, which effort is directed. Desired result. Now, if you don't have a desired result, an aim, a target, what are you, what's, where's all your energy going to? We can easily waste our lives with no sense of, of direction, being driven by our emotions and circumstance, being driven by our lust and unhealthy passions. 
But there's a group of people that are getting dangerous because they're going to get a vision from God. They're going to take their life serious and they say, God, my life, I will use it to accomplish your purpose in my life. I thank you, Lord. I'm not going to live a life with no direction. I want you to direct me. I'm ready to be a visionary, a goal setter, a leader. It takes someone to have a vision. Do you understand that this church only exists because of pen and paper? God wanted the Way World Outreach to exist. It was his idea. And he was just looking for a human being that would make it their goal. So when God says, let's start a church in San Bernardino, all I had to do is say, yes. Amen. And I didn't, I didn't just say yes is what I did. I wrote it down. It became my goal that we would have a church that would impact inner cities across the United States of America. And just like God has a dream and a vision and a goal for our church, he has a dream and a vision and a goal for your life and goals for your life that he wants to accomplish through you in this church. People are dependent on you dreaming and not just living a life. So what's a goal? A desired future result. Say it with me, a desired future result. Everything starts with a desire, a hope, a dream, a vision. The enemy's tactic is to strip us of our godly desires, our hopes, and vision. He wants to strip us of our, our dreams, hope, and vision. He wants us to be blind about our future. When we look, he wants us to look at our future with despair, fear, and hopelessness. He attacks our minds. He reminds us of our past failures. He surrounds you with people with no vision. Because once you get a vision, you're dangerous. He'll have you so depressed that you'll never see a bright day again. But there's a God that's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh that are willing to receive it. And he wants to give you dreams, visions, and prophetic words that are beyond your present circumstance that you can start praising God in the middle of your valley, in the middle of your trial. Because you're gonna say, I might be going through a tough time, but this is not where it ends. God showed me the end. I'm excited. This is just part of the process. Desire for future results. A desire for future results. God promises, look what he promises, to give us the desires of our heart. Look at Psalms 34, 7 says, I mean 37, 4 says this. Seek your happiness in the Lord. And they go together. Someone say, and they go together. They go together. And time together. He will give you your heart's desire. Your heart's desire, your requests, your petitions, your prayers. He's just saying, look, this is the only qualifier. That you would seek your happiness in me. And if you would seek your happiness in me, if I have your heart, I will give you everything in your heart. All I want is your heart. That you'll not seek your happiness in drugs in sin, in the ways of this world. But you would find your happiness in me. And if you would just begin to seek your happiness in me, this is what I'll do for you. I'll give you every single desire in your heart. Every goal that you set, I'll partner up with you and I'll make sure that it comes to pass. God is saying, I just want your heart and I'll give you everything in your heart. I remember one day I was goal setting and I'm goal setting because I want to reach more people. I want, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. So pastors, aren't you supposed to be content? I understand that. I'm, I'm content 
I'm content like in the Lord, but I'm not content with my results. You can't be content where you're at because there's more. It's a sin to stay below where you're supposed to be. So I started dreaming and I started writing and I started writing, so goal setting. So I, a night before I showed up to the staff meetings, Monday, Tuesday, we meet with the staff and I wrote down, I want to get, a, I want to get five buses because I want to start a bus ministry. At this time, the church has no money in the account. We don't have money for buses, but it doesn't matter. Don't let your present circumstance stop you from dreaming. Don't let your past stop you from dreaming. Don't let your doubts stop you from writing down a vision. So I, I wrote it down. We need buses. The next morning, I meet with my staff. I go, man, I got a brilliant idea. They always, uh, they always say, when, when I say, I was just thinking, they know something's coming. I go, I was just thinking, we need buses. And when I said that, we began to talk about buses. And within two minutes, I got a call. I got a call from another church, matter of fact, from the Rock Church in San Bernardino. And they said, this is what they said, I don't even know um, how your name came up in our meeting. But your name came up in our meeting and we want to know, do you want some buses? Right? And like, I don't know, buddy, I don't know people over there. So I didn't talk to somebody about buses. I just talked to the Lord about the buses. I just made it a goal. And God says, that's my goal too. Let's make this happen. I know where there's some buses. So he goes, why don't you come over and take a look at our buses? They had a fleet of buses. So I went over there and I'm still not thinking, right? Because I'm thinking, we can't afford no buses. They probably want to sell buses. We don't even have the gas for the buses yet. <laughs> I just had a dream. I had a goal. We have a meeting with the chief financial officer. So we go in there. He goes, today we're going to be talking about buses. I go, yes, we are. I go, but I go, before you start talking about buses and get too deep in this, this is what I said. We have no money. Just so you know. He goes, I didn't ask if you had any money. I go, okay. Okay, I, I'm just telling you. So what we do, he goes, go take a look at the buses. And, and so we look at the buses. I just go out there. I go, Rob, let's go look at the buses. <laughs> so we go look at the buses. We go look at the buses. And I go, they're awesome. This is even, these are nicer buses than I thought. Amen. They're real nice. I go, okay. So I went back. And I go, we looked at the buses. <laughs> he goes, which ones do you want? I go, all of them. <laughs> all of them. The whole fleet. He goes, well, be, be careful because not all of them are good. I go, which ones are good? He goes, this one, this one, this one, this one. We want those. And we took all those buses. One day we didn't have a bus. The next day we had seven buses. <laughs> well, how does that happen? It happens when one man, when one moment, woman sets a goal to do something and God says, I was just waiting for someone to partner up with. It's time to get some goals, get some desires, and God will give you the desires of your heart. A goal is also a prayer. Someone say prayer. A spiritual way to say goals is prayer. In other words, our prayer list is our goals list. I'm not into setting goals. That sounds kind of, you know, business savvy stuff. What is this? <laughs> no. God's a goal setter. Just put it this way. If you want to, I don't, I'm not into goal setting. Well, are you into praying? Just get a prayer list and you could call it whatever you want and start praying and that's your goal list. You know what goals are and what prayers are? Is that you're believing for something to come into your life that's not there. That's what goal setting is all about. We should be master goal setters. Um, I, I'm, I'm really good at this. So because I'm so good at goal setting, I remember when I was in the business world, 
they would send me to places or businesses that were failing. And I would go in there with one or two people and they said, turn this store around. And then I would ask the owner, I go, where do you want to be? He goes, I want to be here. And then I'd write that down. Right now, this store is selling 100 cars. We need to get to 300 cars. So I'd write down 300 cars. And then what I would do is I would, cu- I would ask God, give me a plan to get to 300. Yes. And then God would give me a plan to get to 300. I knew I couldn't get to 300 cars if, they were, if that store kept doing what they were doing. Amen. Change had to happen. And God had the answer. And all I need to do is ask. And I would write it down. I said, and I would, I would go to the, to the store that was selling 100 cars. I said, guys, we're going to sell 300 cars. Oh, yeah, right. Oh. I go, we're going to get there one way or the other. I guarantee you that. We're going to reach 10,000 souls one way or the other this year. We're going to have an outreach. Come on. We're going to have a crusade at 66 Stadium one way or the other. Come on. Come on. There's a goal. It's on paper. It's going to happen. We're going to open a foster home for, come on, aging out kids. We're going to do that in the name of Jesus. I love it. Right? Come on. So everyone who sets goals receives. Someone say Everyone who sets goals and prays receives. Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, for everyone who asks, what? Receives. Goal setting is asking God. When we are setting goals, we are placing a demand on our future and God. Everyone, I took a look at this, the opposite. Everyone who doesn't set goals and prays does not receive. That means they stay in want. Look at this. In James 4, 2, it's you want things, but you don't get them. I'm going to ask you a question. How many here want things? It's okay. It's okay. No, I don't want things. I only want the Lord. That's it. I don't want food. I don't want a house. I don't want cars. The Lord has everything. <laughs> Come on. We can't, I mean, we're being too spiritual there. I'm so. Of course you want things. It's okay to want things. And God says you want things. It's okay to want a husband if you want one. A thing. <laughs> Some of you guys married a thing. <laughs> yeah? It's okay. It's okay to want a business, a thing. It's okay to want money because you need that thing to help you get with you where you want to get. This. It's okay to want a degree. That's a thing. It's okay to want children. That's a thing. Or a thing. It's a person, it's a noun, it's a noun. Person, place, or thing. (laughs) He goes, you want things, but there's a problem. You don't get them. So this is what you do. So you kill, are jealous of others, but you still can't get what you want. So you argue and fight. He goes, you don't get what you want because you don't ask God, or you don't pray, or you don't even set goals. That's why you don't get what you want. And there's a problem. He's saying, you know what the problem is? You're going to people to get the things that I can give you. So you're fighting them. You're arguing with them. You're talking bad about them. And God said, all that fighting and all that jealousy and all that drama didn't get you a thing. If you would have just asked me, I would have gave you that thing. Because I care about every detail of your life. I love you. The hairs on your head are numbered. You know what he's saying? Every single detail of your life I'm concerned with. And what he's saying, the reason you're stressed out, you're angry, you're depressed. And I want you to get this. While you're angry, you're depressed, you're worrying, you're fearful, you're crying. God doesn't give you nothing. He gives you when you pray. He gives it to you when you pray in faith. Remember, do you guys remember back in the day when you used to, used to get whipped? No, I used to get whoopings. Do you remember getting a good, good whooping? I'm going to talk about, not abuse, just a good whooping. Do you remember that? Do you remember when you used to cry, like really cry? <laughs> After that cry, you were the best little boy, little girl ever. I love you, mommy. Thanks for whipping me. Do you remember after crying like that, the peace you felt like? Do you guys remember that? There was a moment she's whipping you. I hate you, mom. But after, <laughs> after you were done, like, it's just like you got cleansed of that demon. 
<laughs> Remember that? That demon just left right there. <laughs> you got the peace that surpasses all understanding after that whooping. So what does that have to do with it? All I'm saying is, you could cry like that. <laughs> and that's not necessarily what gets it done. What gets it done is a prayer of faith. And God is saying, it's time to start dreaming. It's time to start thinking bigger. And stop letting your past define your future. God is saying, this year will be a year of growth for anybody that's willing to receive it, set some goals, and put this into action. Your business can grow. Your family can grow. Your love can grow. You're just a goal away. So how do we set goals? And I got two minutes to do this. I'm going to give you real quick steps. First step. Pray and ask God for vision and guidance. In Psalms 32, 8, 32, it says this, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Think about that. God said, if you will just come to me, I will begin to guide you and direct you for the best path for your life. I know what's the best path. I know who you should marry. I know what you should do. I know who you should be. I know what decisions you should make. So why are we making so many bad decisions? This is the reason. We're not letting God guide us. We're letting our emotions guide us. We're letting society guide us. We're letting politics guide us. We're letting our anger guide us. We're, we're, letting, we're, we're letting our associates guide us. Friends guide us. And God says, will you just let me guide you and I'll guide you on the best path? Wow. Someone needs to spend some time in prayer. And just sit there with a pen and a paper. God, speak. I need some help in my family. I need some help in my business. I need some help in my finances. I need some help in ministry. I need some help in my spiritual life. Lord, I want to grow. Show me. Second step, write down the desires and vision in your heart. Get vision and write it. Say it with me. Get vision and what? Look at this stat. Oh, 97% of people do not have written goals. 97% of people are just going through life with no sense of direction. And this is the worst part of it. They're raising children with no sense of direction. We're raising societies with no sense of direction. 97%. But look at this. Only 3% set goals. And I want you to take a look at the stat. The 3% that said have written goals. So say it with me. Written. Written goals, written, not goals in their head, but goals on paper. Amen. These people are 10 times more successful than the other 97% combined. The 3%. And this is what I'm asking you. Are you a 3%er or a 97%er? If you're a three percenter, you're going to start taking your life serious and you're going to get some goals and vision and desires on paper. Write down, writing down goals is a necessary step. It is a command of God. It is a necessary step. We can't afford to miss it. Setting goals is the first step. Tony Robbins said this. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Habakkuk 2.2, the word of God says this. And then God's answered, write this. Write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. This vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. What you're writing down is a preview of your future. Wow. It aches for the coming. You know what he's saying is God is aching to get a vision on this earth in your life. It can hardly wait. It doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. This is a question. If you have the guts to write it and the guts and the pressure and the passion to work on it, God is saying, I'm not teasing you. It will surely come to pass. Believe it. Receive it. It's yours. Wow. Third step. Be specific. The more specific, the more powerful the goal of vision is. God is specific. So should we. When God told Noah to build a boat, he said this in Genesis 6, 14. Build a large boat from cypress wood. He just didn't say build a large boat. 
and waterproof it with tar, not with glue. And inside and out, then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 foot long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, and leave an 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks on the inside, the lower, middle, upper. He just didn't say a boat. He gave dimensions. And when God gives you a dream, don't be lazy about it. Get the dimensions. Be specific. I want to become more spiritual this year. That's general. I want to build a large boat. How about that? Whoa. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Devil tried to trip me there. It didn't work. I'm too quick or I need some food in my system right now. But <laughs> <laughs> Knees are buckling under pressure. Praise the Lord. I want to, someone say be specific. I will start off every day at 5 a.m. and spend an hour with God. I want to be more spiritual with God in daily devotions. I will go to church 52 Sundays this year. Hallelujah. I will complete starting at the way and the purple book. I will volunteer one hour a week in the children's ministry. I will tithe off every increase that God blessed me with. Now you're talking about being specific and this is something that makes your dreams and your visions and your goals powerful. So now fourth step in this last one. Create a plan of action for each goal. A goal without a plan of action is just a dream. Planning is hard work. Say it, say it, say it with me. Planning is what? It is. In Proverbs 21.5, it says, Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Our lives are even moving towards prosperity, advancement, growth, fulfillment, achievement, or they're moving towards poverty means lack. Hard work, planning and hard work lead to prosperity. That means every dream, every goal, we're going to have to work hard at it and then you'll succeed. That means you're going to also have to have a good plan. Someone say good plan. And I believe this, the hardest part of achieving a goal is the planning part. Get it on paper, get in a strategy that acts you, actually gets you there. You might even need a team around you to help you with the plan. It's not easy to come up with a really good plan. It might take you eight hours for one goal, just thinking about that goal and getting input from somebody else. Because I want you to get this. If you're working hard and you have a bad plan, it's not going to lead to prosperity. I'm working real hard, but you got a bad plan. We need a good plan and hard work and at least a prosperity. What's a shortcut? A shortcut is thinking I don't have to write down goals. I don't have to set goals. I don't have to come up with a plan and I'll get there anyways. The truth is you're lying to yourself. It's not going to lead you to prosperity. It's going to lead you to poverty. The areas that are lacking will continue to lack for the rest of your life. It's time to set some goals. And any area you set goals in, you can succeed in. How many received this word? Pastor Robert, can you close us out, please? If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.